Good morning. Welcome to the Harry Edwards Sanctuary. Reception area, very quiet. And through the living room. Can't do my leading minute from outside as I usually do because of the weather. Apart from the fact that the view from Cherry Tree Walk. It's covered in mist. It's very wet outside. As I'm sure all of you know. Still looks very nice out there. Very dramatic. And that's the the rose garden. And taking us through of the Eating rooms. And on the wall outside the healing room is the picture of Harry Edwards giving healing to Lady. And that's Ray Branch who's standing at the end. And the lady, the white coat, that's Olive Burton. And next to Harry Edwards, the glasses, her husband, George Burton. Let's carry through. And the lovely picture and a portrait of Harry Edwards that so many of us can draw strength from. The bust and the book, which is so important. Distant healing. Distant healing book. And of course, the sanctuary symbol, the golden cross, surrounded by the golden circle. And Christmas cards here from to our well wishers. And a cast of Harry's hands. And coming around here, past the Christmas tree, on the wall the pictures of Harry Woods guides, Louis Pasteur, and Lord Lister. Coming round, the 
praying hands were made from the ruins of Coventry Cathedral in the last war. It'd be nice to think it was the last war. And the peace and stillness within the sanctuary, within the, in this little chapel. The stained glass window, this came from his sister's sanctuary. After there was a compulsory purchase order on it. She sent the windows to her brother. We'll, we'll go into a healing minute now. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship, and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your grand chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. In Harry Woods' prayer, May I be thankful for all the blessings I already have. Grant me relief from pain and sickness. Protect me from all ills and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me so that I may be conscious of their presence and receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity. Let me be conscious of your strength in all times of need. Grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight to do only that which is right and true. I pray that good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers, one to the other, and that peace shall endure for all time. We're centering here on Harry Edwards' chair, especially made for him to, it's a good turn, We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and people for whom they have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Please join me now in a minute's silence. And send healing thoughts to all those people you know who need healing at this time for any, for any problem. And as always, please remember the animal kingdom.
thanks and blessings for your help here today and to our friends in spirit. Before I start my story, let me just say a few words about healing. Healing isn't just for the sanctuary or in spiritualist churches or any other establishment. Healing is God's gift to the human race. And it's something we could all practice. So, when you're driving and you see an accident, when it's safe to do so, send some thoughts for those people who might be injured. Or when you hear of somebody who's ill or suffering one of life's setbacks, Send out your thoughts to them. What an interesting place the world would be if there was more healing in it. Now, I'd love to start with a story by Kathleen Muldoon. It's from the book Answered Prayers. And this one is called, When Touch is a Whispered Prayer. It was dawn, and my roommate had left earlier on a long road trip to spend some time with her family. It was also trash pickup day, and I'd already dragged one bag out through the rear garage door and backyard to the alley. Since I have a physical handicap and walk with crutches, I'm slow at this chore. I left the alley gate and garage door propped open, then went back into the house for the other trash bag. And as I approached the kitchen door into the garage, I heard a noise. What's going on out there? I said with a laugh, wondering what trouble my cat had gotten into in the garage. I flung open the door. A man stood there, all but his eyes covered with a blue bandana. And in his hand was a small dark gun. He motioned me back into the kitchen. I'm surprised I didn't have a heart attack right there. Uh, it pounded so hard I could hear it. I dropped the trash bag, stumbled backwards, as well as I could on my crutches, and whimpered over and over again, please don't hurt me. I ain't gonna hurt you, he said. I just got out of jail, and I need some cash. Well, my purse was in the bedroom. Please, Lord, don't let him touch me. I prayed all the way down the hall. He followed me and stood in the doorway as I fumbled so badly with my wallet that the $18 in cash fell to the floor. I sat on the end of the bed and picked up the bills with trembling hands. He stepped forward, grabbed them and jammed them in his pocket. Suddenly, an unimaginable feeling of calm and peace touched me like a gentle breeze. The gunman turned and headed down the hall before hesitating a moment. You shouldn't leave your garage door open, lady, he said, and he was gone. He never touched me. I repeated in awe to the kindly policeman who came to take my report. He never touched me. I think this was, this was a crime of opportunity, he said. He was probably walking down the alley, saw the back door open, and went into the garage to see if there was anything to steal. And you know what else? I think he had a degree of compassion and regret when he saw your crutches. Perhaps so. My burglar was never caught, but I've prayed for him. Mostly, though, my prayers have been thanksgiving that instead of the burglar or his gun touching me, God's touch calmed me in my moment of distress. Some wonderful readings from that book. Another book I like to read from a lot is the book Slower Than Butterflies by Eddie Askew. I always find little readings in there that seem to be suitable for the moment. And this one I'd like to read. Two words, if only, 
If only things were different. If only I could change my world, I'd be happy. If only I had other friends, life could be so much easier. If only. We'd all like to change things, make life more comfortable, make it less of a problem. There was once a Muslim teacher, a man who'd lived all his life faithful to his beliefs. When I was young, he said, I prayed for the strength and courage to change the world, but however hard I tried, nothing much seemed to happen. As I got older, I changed my prayer and asked just for the power to change the people around me, but even that seemed hard to do. Now I'm an old man and I simply pray to God for the grace to change myself. That's where change begins, not in trying to shake the foundations of the world, but in looking at ourselves with open eyes, realising that if we want to change anything, we have to begin with ourselves. As Christ said, it's no use criticising your neighbour because he's got a speck of dust in his eye if your own eye is full of it. Change begins with you and it can begin today. Change in the little things, in the way we see each other, the way we react to other people. And the amazing thing is that when we begin to change, so do other people. Very thoughtful, very thoughtful words from Eddie Askew. Just going through the sanctuary. to walk back. I'm coming into the sun lounge here. <laughs> Bit of a misnomer today. finishing here in the lounge thank you very much for listening to me and I hope you all have a very very happy new year Goodbye and enjoy the rest of your day.